What's one of the craziest things that happened? Like, I know you guys had to kind of get rushed through, like, the back of hotels, through restaurants and kitchens, and because, uh, you know, once the bus pulls up, everyone's there. I mean, what was it, what were some of the crazier stories that you remember from just uh, the travel and that, that kind of that scene in August and September? Well, you know what the, the craziest thing was? You know, when batting practice happened, it was a packed stadium just to watch batting practice of Mark McGuire. Uh, and that was the frustrating part for me because Mark would hit these bombs out of stadiums and way out. And then when he walks out of the cage and I walk up, everybody's booing me. So it, it got kind of frustrating, you know, to, to be booed during batting practice. But uh, no, it was just amazing, man, the impact that that home run contest had. You know, him and Sammy Sosa, two good guys, uh, you know, two good teammates, guys like them. Uh, it, it was fun, man. It, it was a different experience, though. Like you said, going to hotels, you know, everybody's trying to be a part of Mark's his, history with when everything trying to get signed, and uh, it was just a packed house, man. We had Mark had to sneak around all the time. Did you? Have, I mean, did you guys have to sneak with him, or was it more, hey, let's get Mark in, and then we'll go pick up our keys and, and fall asleep? Yeah, I mean that's the way it was. I mean, we wanted to make sure Mark was all right. Nobody was, you know, crazy enough to do anything stupid. And uh, so we we were kind of policing for Mark. How hard was it? Because I know Mark uh, did not like that spotlight and he pretty much owned it. He said, listen, I don't want to be part of it. I want to talk about the team. And um, wh- how hard was it watching uh, from afar to see that him, you know, that you knew that this guy isn't just here to show off and hit home runs. He wants to win, but that that spotlight's going to hit you anyway. Well, you know, that was a great thing about Mark and, and the whole process. You know, he didn't like the spotlight. He just wanted to play baseball. And he had a special talent and gift that that many didn't have. You know, that being able to hit for that type of power. Uh, you know, he wanted us to understand, first and foremost, that it's about baseball. Uh, he didn't want the spotlight. But we knew what was going to happen. And, again, he's always looking out for us, our comfort level. And he was always communicating, man, hey, uh, I'm going to take these interviews outside, guys. I don't want I don't want them near your locker and blase, blase. I mean, he was that type of humble guy that looked out team first. And, you know, he just felt like it was just another day. I just want to come in and have fun playing baseball with my teammates. But we all knew knew what it was all about. I mean, the media is the media, and it was a great story every day, and it couldn't happen to me until a better guy, a better teammate, should I say. I've seen many, many batting practices, but I never saw him have to bunt or try to go to right field. Didn't you go, hey, we're trying to work on stuff here. He looked like he was working on hitting at 550 feet. Hey, with that type of gift, man, you, you better not bunt. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was a fun year. What was uh, the 62 night for you like? Just kind of, I mean, that felt like a playoff guy. I was there, and it was just so different than any regular season game. But what was it like just being that, that build up? Because the whole weekend, you're home, you, you get the 60, right. 60 and the Saturday, and then 61 on Labor Day, and then Tuesday's the last day before you guys go on a road trip. So he has to do it if he's going to do it in front of us. That whole little weekend, that time, what was it like going to the ballpark and being around it? And what did it mean to you just to be around it? It was a frustrating night for me because I had injured my wrist and I knew how bad my wrist was, but I knew I wanted to be in the lineup and I knew Tony LaRusso wanted me in the lineup. But, uh, you know, I, I told Tony, man, my wrist is killing me and there's, there's no way I can play. And, you know, so we had that whole conversation before the game and to not be in the game, you know, I kind of sit back and say, dang, I regret that. You know, I should have just tried to play with all the pain and, and get through it. But, uh, you know, you never know when he's going to do it. But I, I was happy to see him do it that night in St. Louis in front of the home fans. And with Sammy Sosa there, I mean, God, it didn't get any better than that, man. To see him and Sammy hug, uh, to see him hold his son up, man, uh, to do the old fist punch in the stomach. Uh, it was a great night, man. Great night for St. Louis uh, to be a part of history then. Yeah. yeah. You. Uh, I want to ask you about Mark McGuire because this this was a big yeah. uh, documentary that came out. And I know you, you did some interviews. Um, what was it like when he showed up for this team in 97 and you getting to watch him do his thing and see 
kind of the beginnings of uh, him chase 62 and 97 and then in 98 be part of it as you give up one of those bombs um right. what was it like when he showed up and just kind of seeing him do his thing at batting practice because it wasn't it wasn't that big a deal in 97 he, he did get the 58 um obviously the next year was the big year where it was just everybody was around what did you get to see him as a teammate the way i know you came back in 2000 he was here no one um but at the heart of it, was there a lot going on where you, you'd you never seen anything like it? And then again, pitching to him in 98 and giving up a 500-foot bomb? Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. Actually, that home run, I was talking about it to, with Buster Olney. So you're in, you're in good company. And I told him that home run may be in the shortest home run other than his 62nd home run in that just barely cleared that line drive. Um, but... Guys were literally amazed. Teammates, they're, they're, every major league player is good, but he was on a different, he was on a different scale. And so we even would go out to watch him take BP. And I think as a major league player, uh, when the organization goes above and beyond and they go out and get players and they're trying, you're, you're like, okay, they're, they're trying to help us win. Uh, in 02, Will Clark showed up. I know we just lost a really tough game in Montreal and, Jockety walked in. He said, you know, I know it stinks. We just had a tough game. We just traded for Will Clark. He's going to meet us. And everybody was fired up because they're like, the organization wants us to win and they're going to put those pieces together. So it was like that with Big Mac. Uh, He was just so much fun to watch. Uh, It was just everybody that saw him obviously would would know. It's like home run derby and BP. And uh, it was just so much bigger and majestic than anybody else that would would take swings uh i did give up a home run in in 98 uh first time i ever faced him uh, i faced the cardinals in st louis after i went to the d-backs and had a my contract fell through and i was so sad i ended up in arizona and it it, it turned out fine but i wanted to be a cardinal and so i faced him in in st louis it was a double header and he didn't play the second game that i started uh, so I faced him in Arizona. The first time I faced him, three pitch, three fastballs, third one swung through it, and I'm like, okay, I got him. I got enough to get it by him. Next time, bases loaded, didn't get it by him, grand slam. Uh, ball that almost hit the roof, and then it, it made it out. So uh, he was a, a fun guy to watch. He was very prepared. Uh, he knew what hitters were going to try to do to him. He was he was fairly disciplined didn't go out of the strike zone a lot for a a big slugger and even in 98 uh like i said i was in arizona but you know the cardinals would be playing we'd be getting done with batting practice because we were two hours different and uh in time and it was just fun to watch everybody wanted to know what he and sosa were doing and i gave up a home run to both of them so i was impartial but i helped them get to their number and uh that home run chase was was super fun. Obviously, uh, we know a lot more about what guys were doing and all of that. And, you know, guys do what they are going to do. Uh, I played the game clean, which was great. And a lot of guys did. A lot of guys didn't. But those two guys were phenomenal hitters. Uh, they were phenomenal sluggers, uh, just like Bonds and... I say all the time, those three guys are bona fide Hall of Famers. Uh, did they make mistakes? Sure. There are a bunch of Hall of Famers that were in the same boat that they are. And few of them even got caught and served suspensions. But, uh, you know, hopefully those three guys, because they are such a big part of Major League history, will uh, make it in. And teammate of yours, one of the Bash brothers. What was that like playing with? And in '97, you had McGuire and you had you had Canseco on the same team. Canseco obviously was back from the Texas Rangers and Red Sox yeah. in his last year, I think. Um, what was that like playing with those guys? Oh, it was crazy. I mean, it, it was it was different. You know, I don't think they were as close as they were yeah. earlier in their career. Um, it kind of it went it went a little sideways after that, I think, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was neat. You know, we, we were hoping that they'd, you know, start doing the Bass Brothers stuff again, but they never did the four on bashes and stuff. But, uh, I was pretty close to, to McGuire and, and Giambi. McGuire always got, he kind of took me under his wing, but he always was 
messing with me. And Giambi was, I think, only a year older than me. So him and I were, were pretty good buddies, too. The Kinseko was just, he was kind of a different breed, but he was he was hilarious. He'd do a lot of funny, funny stuff, you know. And then, actually, I think I, somewhere in somewhere with the Angels, one year he was in spring training with us. Um, and I remember him saying that he was he could still run like a four, you know, a four three down the first or whatever. And, and I was like, okay, I think I can beat. He's like, you want to race? And we we raced from the, you know from the foul line. And he pulled his hamstring, and then they, he, he pulled it so bad they cut him in spring training. <laughs> so that was the last. I don't know if he ever played again after that. But uh, he was, he always had, you know, some kind of business proposition, too. You know, like uh, he was going to start a financial management company or, you know, he, he, was, he was something. I'm, I'm still friends with him on, on Facebook. <laughs> I haven't talked to him in a while, though. We were, at, we were trying to get him to see if he'd play in our league, you know, for fun. But he said he needed he needed so much money per game and paid in cash before the game started. So, you know, we couldn't do it. But it, it would have been fun. I'm, there's probably a 30 for 30 in that guy because that's funny. I remember back in when he was huge in the 80s, late 80s, he had his own hotline. You could call it, and he would talk about what he did that night. Hey, yeah, there's Jose. I'm in Minnesota. Boy, there's no bars here open after one. This is t- It was hilarious to me. I didn't call it. I'm not saying. Oh, t- my God. But it did. That's wow. what they played on the uh, – <laughs> And we're with Mr. DeWitt, and boy, you've got to be excited about this. Unbelievable moment. You know, it's just yeah, almost hard to believe. We knew it was coming, but when it does come, it's just so special. It's been great. Can we can get you, Mr. We can get you to come in, Mr. Hunter. You know, both you guys took over in 96. I don't think you knew what you were getting into, did you? Well, I sure did, and I'll tell you that. You couldn't have known you were going to get into something as historic as this. It's once in a lifetime, and it's beautiful. What were you guys thinking? When you saw that liner just going up and up, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, 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 all right, buddy. <laughs> but you saw it going up. Did you think it was going out? Well, I just kept looking to see if I was going to see it again off the wall or off the face of the wall, and it didn't reappear. So that's when we knew it was gone. And you guys are sitting around the Maris kids. How did they react? Obviously, they look very happy. Actually, we're just over talking to Mark McGuire's parents and congratulating them and seeing them. We've got to go over and talk to the Marises next. Thank you very much. The Cardinals owner is very excited. You look at baseball today and you see Griffey and Frank Thomas trying to attempt to get Roger Maris' 61 home runs. Do you think any two teammates will have the same year as you guys had in 61? Well, it'll be harder for two guys to hit that many than it, than it will. With all the new ballparks and uh, center field fence just being 400 feet away now and like 380 to dead, I mean to left center and right center, I think, and as big as these guys, these kids are great athletes. I mean, you know, like Frank Thomas, I, f- I interviewed him one time when I quit the Yankees. I, I was doing some uh, TV, and uh, I interviewed him. I was, I was asking him a question. I had to hang the mic up to him. So I felt like a little leaguer, really. These guys like Griffey, Bonds, uh, Thomas, them, those guys are great athletes, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see somebody break it. Last question. Do you think there might be? How, how does it feel sitting there with your bat next to Roger Maris's bat? Well, as I went over to the, the box and talked uh, to Roger's kids, uh, I told them today when I met with the Hall of Fame, they pulled out Roger's bat that when he had his 61st home run. And, uh, and I touched it. I touched, touched it with my heart. Now I can honestly say that my bat will lie next to his, and I'm damn proud of it. Okay, here.